Oh, alrighty, this is not ESPN's 30 for 30. However, it is my 98 for 98. The 98 seasons in the history of the New York football giants going to try to get it done in 98 days. That's probably not going to happen. If I have, or I will get it done before the beginning of the new season or by the beginning of the new season, which starts September 10th against those Dallas Cowboys. And we're getting oh, so close, so close. After today, we'll be down to seven seasons left. We're at season number 91. The 2015 season, 91st season in the history of the uh, New York Giants, 96th season in the history of the NFL. NFL started in 1920, Giants started in 1925, so the Giants are five years younger than the NFL is. So the 2015 season, once again, <clears throat> another losing season. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a wild season, just a wild season. Um the uh, Josh Norman, Odell Beckham, Rumble in the Jungle. Um, the 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 once again the yeah. Giants going to the Superdome, playing Drew Brees this time. He, I mean, seven touchdown passes against. I mean, it was what a wild shoot! I've been going back and forth, back and forth, but the defense was absolutely abysmal this season. Absolutely horrible. So many last second, last minute losses. It was just tough, tough season. Um, I mean, if the defense was decent, I mean, the Giants would have had a winning record. I mean, the offense was very good, putting up points. It's just the defense was horrible, absolutely horrible. And sadly, this would be the final season for Tom Coughlin. Um, <laughs> They, they got the bright idea to pull the plug on the Tom Coughlin era and it, it, and install instead install the Ben McAdoo era. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> oh my god. Wee. Yeah, it's been a fun story, right? And the Ben McAdoo era, which lasted not even two years. Then we had the Pat Sherman era, which lasted two years. Then we had the Joe Judge era, which lasted two years. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, wow. Absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um, but as I said, the uh, you know, the defense was just simply atrocious. Simply atrocious. <laughs> but let's see here. How did the season start off? Let's go to the um, preseason, shall we? And how did the Giants fare in preseason? Uh, not too bad. Two and two overall. The first game, of the, uh, it was on August 14th, they played at Paul Brown Stadium against the Cincinnati Bengals. They would lose 23 to 10. The following week, they would play home at MetLife Stadium against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they would win 22 to 12. Another one and one. Then, of course, they would finish with weeks three and four, as they pretty much did annually. Their uh, usually their annual third week game against the Jets and then their annual fourth week game against the Patriots. So their annual third week game against the Jets, the Giants with a home team against the Jets at MetLife Stadium and the Giants would lose 28-18. Then they would finish up the reg, uh, the preseason on the road at Gillette Stadium against those Patriots and they would win another barn murder 12 to 9. They would win. Oh, wait, let me see. They won 12 to 9. Against the Patriots in 2015, was it six to three the year before? I mean, that was a, that was a couple of years before. Another and, and uh, another was it two seasons before 2013? Yeah, yeah. I know they had a game that was six to three. I thought I thought it might have, might have been back to back years. Nope. Okay, now it wasn't. It was 2012 season. The Giants played uh, the Patriots. And it was six to three. So, so it was six to six to three against the Patriots in 2012. Then in 2015, it was 12 to nine. So, it was like the, the battle of the field goals. But um, you know, once again, it was just preseason. Giants were two and two. So, what does Wikipedia have to say about the 2015 season for the New York Football Giants? The 2015 New York Giants season was the franchise's 91st season in the National Football League. 
and the sixth season playing their new their home games at, at the new home MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Tom Coughlin returned for his 12th and final season as the team's head coach. The Giants attempted to secure a playoff berth for the first time since their 2011 season, which concluded with their win in the Super Bowl. To honor the late Frank Gifford and Ann Mara, both of whom died earlier in 2015, the Giants added a number 16 decal on their helmets and special patch for Gifford and Mara, respectively. So very nice, very nice. The Giants began the season 0-2 for the third straight year, and in doing so, became the first team in NFL history to go 0-2 while holding double-digit leads in the fourth quarter of both games. It was just absolutely horrible. Their, their defense was just absolutely horrible. Couldn't hold anything. Couldn't hold anything. And so the, so we were one of the first team in NFL history to go 0-2 while holding double-digit leads in the fourth quarter in both games. So we'll go over the games, you know, just a little bit. However, they rebounded to win their next three games before losing to the Eagles. The Giants' 2015 season was plagued by their inability to close out games, as I had mentioned in the beginning of this video. As the Giants lost six games in which they held leads or were tied within the final two minutes. They lost six games in which they held lead or were tied with two in the final two minutes of the game. I mean, could you switch that around? I mean, if they won those games, they would have been 12 and four. It's just their, their offense was very good. I had, I think, over 26 points again, which we'll go over in just a minute, but their defense was horrible. These losses included their opening game against the Dallas Cowboys, their home opener. Uh, wait. The, oh, their opening game, opening game against the Cowboys and their home opener against the Atlanta Falcons. A road loss to the Saints and two home defeats against New England Patriots and the Jets. Had the Giants won these games, they would have finished 11-5 and and would have won the NFC East. After the Washington Redskins defeated the Eagles on December 26 during a Sunday, uh, Saturday edition Thursday Night Football, the Redskins clinched the division of the NFC East, eliminating the Giants from playoff contention for the fourth consecutive year and officially ending the Coughlin-Eli Manning era in New York. Very sad, very sad. As they both came in, to the Giants back in 2004. So 2004 to 2011, what a special, special time it was. After having made the playoffs five times and won two Super Bowls, both times were against the, the Patriots. So the, the, the Coughlin, Eli, Eli Manning era ended 12, 12 years. So sad from 2004 to 2015. Very, very sad. And it just really, a lot of it was not, um, you know, the, I mean, you know, you, you always, obviously, it starts at the top. You blame the coach. You know, when you lose, it's the coach's fault, right? But, you know, I can't really say so much it was the coach. It, it, it was, um, yeah, I blame it on the fact that the, the, the Jerry Reese, the, the general manager, didn't know how to draft. And when he did draft good people, he, he, he never kept the people. He never kept them. He, he wouldn't resign people. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't build a team, you know, never resigning your players, your good players, and, and just, you know, having guys for two, three years or whatever it is and just letting them go. You, you can't build a team that way. And, and he, he tried to. And I just, absolutely horrible job. Absolutely horrible job. As we see here in 20, 2015, the draft, pick number nine overall. I and mean, Eric Flowers was uh, was an uh, okay offensive lineman. I mean, he even got put in, in his guard. You know, he was drafted as a tackle, played a lot of times as, as tackle, but he even got put in his guard. I mean, he... he he was serviceable. He could play, not always very well, but pick number nine, wow. And I think, this, once again, this is one of those things. I'm not even sure if Tom Coughlin had even a say in the matter. 
you know, uh, I think they, they needed, you know, they need offensive line help and all, and but they wound up taking, I mean, the, the back-to-back picks that they took uh, in the first round, uh, 2015 and in 2016, they took um, Eric Flowers and Eli Apple. Two top 10 picks. Eric Flowers, number nine, and in 2016, Eli Apple was number 10. What absolute trash. Absolutely. They were both could play in the NFL. Absolutely. And as far as I know, Eli Apple was, I think, playing last year. I think he was with the Dolphins. I mean, you know, still playing. So, I mean, you know, adequate, not phenomenal, but I mean, pick number, uh, Eli Apple, pick number 10. Oh, my goodness. Eric Flowers, pick number nine. Oh, my goodness. Are you, what are you smoking? Whew. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, but, the, you know, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, the, the general manager drafts and gives it to the coach and tells them to, to make a team out of it. And just absolutely horrible. Thankfully, the Giants traded up in the second round with the Tennessee Titans. They had to trade away three picks to get, but they landed landing Collins. And this was, once again, back-to-back seasons where the Giants' second-round pick was so far superior to their first-round pick. It wasn't even funny. 2015, Landon Collins in the second round, far superior to Eric Flowers in the first round. 2016, uh, Sterling Shepard, who's still on the team. Thank you. Goodness. Thank goodness, right? So Sterling Shepard, the second-round pick in 2016, is far superior to Eli Apple, the moron in the – First round of the 2016 draft. I mean, a moron. Actually, you know, uh, you, you know what a class is worth is piece of human trash he is. He 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 plays with the Giants and then he goes and he plays with the the, the Saints. Uh, you, know, you know, these teams, you know, either drafted him or, or want him to play out of the goodness of their heart and all that. And 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 the moron after he leaves them, he, he all he does is is trash the the teams, the organizations, the city. He says, I think he said like New Orleans smells and all kinds of what an absolute worthless piece of human trash he is. Absolute garbage he is, Eli Apple. Well, well, we'll talk more about that more on uh, in the 2016 season, but we're in the 2015 season. So, but thankfully they they jumped up, okay, and traded with the uh, the, the Titans. Now it cost them. Uh, they they draft. They jumped up. Was it six or seven spots? They did the first pick in the second round. The Giants were picking 40th and they jumped up to 33. So they one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They jumped from 40 to 33. So it's like, well, they jumped up one, seven spots. They jumped up, right? Um, and they, they traded with the, uh, the Titans. Um, but, you know, so they drafted Landon Collins with the first pick in the second round. But they had to give up, obviously, their second round pick. They had to give up a fourth round pick and had to give up a seventh round pick. So to go up seven spots, it cost them a second, a fourth, and a seventh. So it was, it was costly. It was it was costly. But, it, you know, the landing Landon Collins wound up, you know, you know, not totally making up for Eric Flowers, but it was a very, very good pick. Then in the third, but this is just goes to show you, how, I mean, just, you, you, you know, some of these guys you got to land. Some of these guys you have to land. These later round picks you have to land. And even when he did land these guys, and, and Jerry Reese, the, the general manager, went, when he did land them and they were decent players, they never re-signed them. They played four years or whatever, three, four years, and they just let them go. They never re-signed them. Absolutely horrible. Well, he took uh, Owa Mag- Magby or Diggy Zawu. I believe that's how, it, how you say. Okay, he's a defensive end from UCLA. All right, they took him in the third round. He played two seasons in the NFL, and he never played ever again. He played 18 games in the NFL. He didn't start any. This is your third-round pick. He wound up playing two seasons in the NFL, he never started a game for you, and then his career was over. He never played ever again in the NFL. 
He wound up with six combined tackles in his career. That's your third round pick. Absolute horrible, horrible pick. Your third round pick, two seasons, never plays again. Third rounder. I mean, nowadays that would that would not fly at all. That would be an absolute horrible pick. But that's what Jerry you got from Jerry Reese. And I said the Giants did not have their fourth round pick because they traded it away to the Titans. All right, and when they trade, and then when they jumped up in the second round to take Landon Collins, so no fourth round pick. In their fifth round pick, this this I mean, once again, but this is a fifth round pick. This is a later pick, so it is what it is. Um, I, I think it's Mikeeley Thompson. They took. He was a safety from Texas. Now, once again, once again, he was a fifth round pick, but I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. You know, also, sometimes it goes. It's just like you know. Also depends upon who's doing the draft. And if you look, if you look at Shane, Shane's drafting Eric Gray. He's tra- drafting Trey Hawkins, the third, right in the sixth round. Right, he's, so he's drafting good players in the fifth and sixth round. Jerry Reese is drafting the, this guy Thompson here, who played one season. He played one game for the Giants. Actually, he didn't play in 2015. He played one game for the Giants in his career. So they're they're. <laughs> Their fifth round pick played one game in the NFL. Career was over. Never played ever again. And he didn't play in 2015. 2016, one game, one tackle. Career was over. Never played ever again. I mean, that, that's that's the Jerry Reese you come to know and love. Absolute horrible draft picks. Horrible. Then in the sixth round, the Giants took Jeremy Davis, a wide receiver from Connecticut. He actually had yeah, six round play. Actually played five seasons in the NFL. Problem was, not much of it was with the Giants. One season was with the Giants. The other four were with the Chargers. So you draft somebody, and he winds up playing five, six round, uh, playing five seasons in the NFL. Only one with you. <laughs> the other four were with the Chargers. Right. Then we had good old Bobby Hart, seventh round pick, Bobby Hart, guard from uh, Florida State. And, um, he, you know, he was, he, he had his own little problems with the Giants. Now, as far as I know, he was playing up to last year. What did he play with the Giants? He played three seasons with the Giants. And then he played with Cincinnati. And then he played with Buffalo, Tennessee, and then uh, Buffalo and Tennessee. So, I mean, and I said he was playing with Buffalo. Played with Buffalo last season. He played 15 games with Buffalo last season. So I was, oh, I know he still might even be playing out there, right? But once again, you know, he he he, he 2015 he got drafted up to 2022. He was still playing, but only three of the seasons were with the Giants. Now I think he had like some type of an issue, maybe where he he wasn't playing, or he he maybe they. He was injured, or he felt he was injured, but the Giants thought maybe he should have been playing, and he didn't want to play. I think it was one of the games toward the end of the season. I think it was, and it was out of that, but that was in 2017. Okay, 2017, and um, uh, Gettleman let him go. I think Gettleman just cut him, or, or I don't know if he traded him, cut him, whatever he did. But I think toward the end of 2017, I think the Giants wanted him to play. And uh, he was injured. Uh, I guess the Giants maybe thought he wasn't as injured as he was, but he did, he didn't want to play because I mean the, the Giants' 2017 was not a good season. So I, I, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, Gettleman wanted to like either cut him, whatever, you know, just let him go, cut him, trade him, whatever. But he, they got rid of him. He only played three seasons with the Giants, and then never played ever again. But he was, he got drafted by Jerry Reese, but Jerry but uh, Dave Gettleman got is one that got rid of him. Um, so, but once again, you know, he, he had a somewhat lengthy career in the NFL, but only three of them were with the Giants. Yeah. So, but I mean, as I said, if you, if you look at this draft, I said Landon Collins, I mean, actually didn't even Landon Collins, he, you know, he's one, he had a, a, a nice career with the Giants, but after, you know, they, they didn't want to pay him what he was going to get paid. So he wound up playing with the, the Washington Redskins. He played four seasons with the Giants. He went to three Pro Bowls and was an All Pro in 2016. 2016, the Giants had a very good defense, but then he went to the uh, Washington Redskins, 
for three years, and he came back to play for the Giants in 2022. I think he might still be a free agent. But once again, the Giants they draft somebody, a good player. Landon Collins is a very good player. He was, a, you know, very good player. But once again, the Jerry Reese here, you know. Well, actually, uh, by the time his four years were up, Landon Collins, uh, Dave Gettleman was here. But, I mean, the Giants, was, you know, they would draft, and they would just would not re-sign their players. It's just simply absolutely amazing. When they when they have finally have a good player, they would just not resign them. It's just unbelievable. And then you gotta wonder why the team it was just from you know from twenty was it twenty twelve, right to twenty twenty one. Ten seasons they went to the playoffs one time, right? Because twenty eleven they went to the, they won the Super Bowl and, and starting in twenty twelve to twenty twenty one those ten seasons they went to the playoffs one time, which was in twenty sixteen. Simply amazing. They would never resign their players. <laughs> oh my goodness! But thankfully, Joe Shane is changing all of that. Okay, he's he's signing he's signing uh, the, the the Giants good players. So thankfully, now as I said, the Giants offense was not the problem. The Giants offense, and it was a shame because um, Victor Cruz was hurt. He got hurt in 2014. And uh, he tried to come back from his injury, but he did strain his calf, or some, I think it was did something to his calf, and he missed all 2015 season. He tried to come back from uh, his injury, which he when he got injured against the Eagles, and he made it back, I think, to training camp, and he wound up uh, straining a calf muscle. So, and he had to have surgery on his calf, so he missed the whole 2015 season. So they did this without. Victor Cruz, they averaged uh, 26.3 points per game, which was sixth in the NFL. I mean, really good. Um, problem was their defense gave up 27.6 points per game, which was 30th out of 32 teams in the NFL. Absolutely atrocious. Um, let's see what we got here. You know, I said Eli had, a, had a, uh, let's see, he was slaying. He threw it 618 times, which is a t- phenomenal amount of passes. I mean, you start going over 600 times. I mean, that's an awful lot. Um, he's, he completed 62.6% of his passes. He threw for 4,432 yards. He had 35 touchdown passes and only 14 interceptions. Very, very good season for Eli Manning. And he went to the Pro Bowl. Let's see here. Um, the Giants running game, nothing super spectacular. They averaged four yards a carry as a team. R- Rashard Jennings averaged eight, eight uh, average. He had 863 yards rushing. Andre Williams had 257 yards uh, rushing. Shane Vereen, remember him? He had 260 yards. Orleans Darkwa, well, I liked him. I always liked him. He had 153 yards. You know, so I mean, they, you know, they they had sixteen hundred nine rushing yards for the season, so they averaged basically a hundred yards a game running the ball. Yeah, you you like to see a little more runs than 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 what they had because they passed the ball an awful lot, but you know they got a lot of yards, especially passing the ball. I mean, yeah. You know, so between actually, so between rushing the ball and passing the ball, they got about six thousand yards of offense for the season. So for, uh, you know, um, in 16-game schedule, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's that's a little under 400 yards a game. So, you know, they, they put up some points, and they and they, they got some yards. It's, the problem was their defense. Uh, the defense only gave up – well, the, the running game only had – we only got five rushing touchdowns all season. The defense gave up 15 rushing touchdowns. The defense gave up 4.4 yards a carry. That eh, wasn't, wasn't too bad. Not, not, not too 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 bad. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the defense gave up four four thousand nine hundred twenty passing yards, so they gave up almost five thousand yards passing. They gave up sixty six point three percent completion percentage. You know they gave up uh, you know awful lot. 
Awful lot. Josh Brown was the kicker. He was 30 out of 32, 93.8%. Absolutely phenomenal percentage. 30 out of 32 field goals. Simply amazing. Uh, he missed one extra point. He was 44 out of 45. Then we had Steve Weatherford was no longer with the Giants. Now we had Brad Wing. Huh? 44.5 yards a punt. Not bad. He only had six touchbacks all year. He, had, he kicked and he, he kicked 33 inside the 20. 43.4% of his kicks went inside the 20. Absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Yeah, the, the deep ends only had 23 sacks all year. I mean, it was, yeah. Said he lacked a pass rush is an understatement. Robert Ayers led their team with nine sacks. Um, but the offensive line only gave up 27. You know, but just the, no pass rush whatsoever. But, I mean, their, their defense, let's see, what did they give? They gave up a kickoff return for touchdown. They gave up an interception return for touchdown. Uh, another interception return for a touchdown. They gave up a fumble return for a touchdown, which is one of the reasons why they lost against the the the, um, the Eagles in the final game of the season. I mean, it was an 83. We'll go over that one. We'll go, we're we're going to go over that one. But it was just a rough season, rough, rough season. So let, let's go over game by game here, shall we? As I said, I mean – you know, what, what they were talking about, the Giants here in, in week one, I mean, it's just games where they just had these 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 leads and they just could not hold them because the defense was atrocious. The Giants, let's see, and, and they said, and, and they said Wikipedia was talking, they said the Giants were the first, apparently the first, first team in NFL history to start the season 0-2 but have double-digit leads in its first two games of the season and wind up losing them both. So in the, with eight minutes and one second left to go, Rashad Jennings had a one yard touchdown run. The giants were beating the Cowboys 23 to 13 in Dallas up by 10 points with eight minutes to go. The Cowboys, Jason Witten caught a one yard touchdown pass from Tony Roma to make it 23 to 20. Well, then what one minute, and 34 seconds left to go. The giants drove all the way down the field I guess it looks like got to maybe about the two yard line. Couldn't get it in. If they could have scored a touchdown, they would have won the game. Got down to the two. Drive stalled. Josh Brown kicks a 19 yard field goal, puts the Giants up 26 to 20 with one minute and 34 seconds left to go. So basically, the Cowboys have a minute and a half and they have to score a touchdown. That's what they did. <laughs> got the ball. Walk right down the field. And with seven seconds left to go, Tony Romo hit Jason Witten on an 11-yard touchdown pass. They kicked the extra point. The Cowboys won 27-26. So instead of starting off 1-0, Giants started off 0-1. Then we go to week number two. against uh, This is the, uh, their home opener against the Atlanta Falcons. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Yep, the Giants were winning 20 to 10 in the final quarter. All right. And once again, they gave up and in the, in the, in the two touchdowns in the final quarter and they lost. So going into the uh, fourth quarter, the Giants were winning 20 to 10. With 12 minutes and 39 left, seconds left to go, Leonard uh, Hankerson uh, caught a 10 yard touchdown pass from Matt Ryan, from Matty Ice, to close the gap with, to make it 20 to 17. And the score held up. With one minute and 14 seconds left to go, Devontae Freeman had a two-yard touchdown run. Matt Bryant, who used to be a former Giant, kicked the extra point, and the Falcons wind up winning 24-20. to 20. The Giants couldn't score. Just, just couldn't score. The, the Giants scored. Larry Donnell caught a 10-yard touchdown pass from Eli Manning. And um, with 10 minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and the rest of the whole rest of the game, the Giants couldn't score a point. Could not score a point. And once again, the Giants were up 20 to 10 going into the fourth quarter, and uh, they lost. So instead of starting off 2-0, Giants were 0-2. 
Then the Giants, you know, as it said in Wikipedia, the Giants wind up winning their next three games. They uh, uh, Next week they played at home against the Washington Redskins. They won 32 to 21. Now, you know, mind you, you know, pretty much keep in mind all of the um, – Oh, excuse me, hold on a second. <coughs> excuse me. You know, just pretty much keep in mind all these games here, right? You know, the, the, the offense is doing a very good job as far as scoring points. It was, um, yeah, pretty much like one, and maybe another game where they really, eh, you know, well, let's see, put it this way. Every game they scored at least 20 points except for three, okay? So just keep in mind as we go along. You know, how many points the offense is putting up pretty much in almost all of these games. So they beat Washington in the third game of the season, 32 to 21. Now the Giants are one and two. They, you know, if, if things went right for the Giants, they could be three and oh, but they're one and two. Then the Giants played in Buffalo and they beat the Bills 24 to 10. Once again, they scored some points. The defense actually did good against Buffalo, right? But this was just before the Josh Allen era, right? So it was 24 to 10. Now the Giants are two and two. The Giants, once again, so that's how I broke them record. The Giants could be four and oh, but they're two and two. Then they played the San Francisco 49ers at home and they won once again. They won 30 to 27. So they scored some points, but they gave up a bunch of points, but they scored just enough. And they won, uh, you know, 30 to 27. As I said, once again, the Giants could have been five and oh, but they're three and two. Let's see here. What did I do here? Okay, well, this one here, okay, the Giants actually pulled the, uh, you know, pulled out a victory here. The 49ers, Carlos Hyde had a two-yard touchdown run with a minute 45 to go, putting the 49ers up 27 to 23. So in this one game, the Giants kind of turned the tide. They got the ball, marched down the field, and with 21 seconds, Larry Donnell scored a 12-yard touchdown pass from Eli Manning, and the Giants actually won 30-27. to 27. So this is like the one game, I think, kind of like all year long where the Giants actually pulled something out, right? Pulled victory out of the jaws of the feet. But then they had, um, let's see here. Then the following week, then this is the one game they kind of, you know, <laughs> didn't play. They lost 27 to 7 in Philadelphia. All right, this is the only game where the, the offense only scored single digits as far as points. The following week, the Giants rebound. They, they beat the Cowboys at home. Right? They paid the Cowboys back. The Giants won 27 to 20. Now the Giants are 4 and 3. Then we go to the Nolans game in the Superdome, the House of Horrors. Usually when they play down there against. Drew Brees, Drew Brees lights him up for about seven, 8,000 yards passing. And in this case, seven touchdown passes. Defense was absolutely ungodly atrocious. Uh, th th they had 505 passing yards. They had 608 total yards. They had 35 first downs, the Saints did. 35 first downs. Absolutely horrible. Let's see. Drew Brees uh, uh, threw a 34-yard touchdown pass. He threw a 26-yard touchdown pass. He threw a 53-yard touchdown pass. He threw a two-yard touchdown pass. Brandon Cooks, who's now is with the, uh, I believe, right, I think it was the Cowboys. He caught a 21-yard touchdown pass. Ben Watson caught a 20-yard touchdown pass. Um, and then Drew Brees threw a um, a nine-yard touchdown pass. Right, seven. And the thing was, is that the Giants had a lead once again. Okay, forty-nine to forty-two. I mean, Eli, he was he was doing his own. All right, he, you know, I mean, there was thirteen touchdown passes in this game. Thirteen. I think that's an NFL record. Um, but so they had a 49-42 lead, um, with. 36 seconds left to go. I mean, it just goes to show you how ungodly horrible that this team was. 36 seconds to go, the Saints scored on a touchdown pass from Drew Brees to tie the game at 49. Okay, 
36. So if the Giants get the ball back, if they can't score, it's going to overtime. All right. Okay. All right. With 36 seconds, the Saints scored to tie it up. The Saints got the ball back and kicked the game-winning field goal. All right. So the Giants, so with 36 seconds to go, the Saints kicked off to the Giants. The Giants had the ball, kicked it back to the Saints. The Saints drove in the field goal range and scored it and kicked the field goal, 50-yard field goal as time expired to win 52 to 49. Unbelievable. I mean, in the final 36 seconds of the game, the Saints scored two times. <laughs> Just unbelievable. I mean, let's see. What, what, what was Drew Brees here in this game? It's just unbelievable. He was 39 out of 50. So basically, he threw 50 pay, completed almost 75% of his passes, almost four out of, uh, no, 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 my bad, four out of five, almost 80% of his passes he completed. So basically, it was four out of every five passes he completed. Almost 80 percent, like 79 percent of his passes he completed. Absolute oh, trash, horrible defense. He had 505 yards passing, seven touchdowns. He didn't get sacked one time. Somehow, his quarterback rating was only 131. I thought it would be like, I mean, well, he threw two interceptions. I think that's what it did him in. But I mean, it's just horrible. 80% of his passes he can play. That's 505 yards and, and seven touchdowns. Just absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible, the defense. Gave up two scores in the final 36 seconds of the game. All right, so now the Giants are 4-4. Four and four. Then they would come home. I'm sorry, they were going on the road. They were on the road. They played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they would beat the Bucs 32-18. Now the Giants are 5-4, and four, but I said if we go back, all these games, the Giants, you know, the first two games, the Giants could have won a double digit leads in the final quarter. The Giants, instead of being five and four, could be seven and two. But then they went up on this one here against the New England Patriots. They played the New England Patriots the following week at home. And they lost 27 to 26 to the New England Patriots. Stephen Giskowski kicked a 54 yard field goal with one second left to go and gave the Patriots the 27-26 lead. Actually, what, what happened here, the Giants, Josh Brown kicked a 29-yard field goal with a minute 47 seconds left to go to put the Giants up 26-24. to So the Patriots got the ball back with a minute 47, walked right down the field, right? And they kicked the game-winning field goal with one second left to go. Once again, Giants lost. Just unbelievable. And 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 this here is, I mean, with 11 minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter, Rob Gronkowski caught a 76-yard touchdown pass from Tom Brady. 76-yard touchdown pass. I mean, I don't remember what it was. A, I'm sure it wasn't a bomb, but he caught it and he, he 76 yards. He rumbled and nobody could freaking tackle him. Absolutely gutless, pathetic defense. Once again, Giants give up another, you know, in the final final minute, one second left to go. Give up the lead. Absolutely unbelievable. All right, so now the Giants are 5-5. Five and five. Then they had their bye week. Then they lost to the Redskins 20-14 to 14 in Washington. Let's see, was this a, a final second kind of? No, nah. No, the Redskins were up, actually up 20 to nothing. And the Giants scored two touchdowns in the final quarter to make it 20 to 14. So, so no last second loss there to that one. Let's see. Then the Giants lost there. And here we go. The Giants lost in overtime the following week to the Jets, 23 to 20. So, what happened in here? The Jets, yeah, unbelievable. This is just absolutely, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Giants were winning 20 to 10. They had a double digit lead with about four and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They had a 10 point lead with four and a half minutes to go. And they gave up 10 points to the, to the Jets. And then they gave up the field goal in overtime. With four minutes and 24 seconds to go, Randy Bull kicked a 24 yard field goal to make, make it 2013 in favor of the Giants. 
Randy Brock of the Jets kicked the field goal to make it 20 to 13. Giants got the ball because couldn't do much with it, with it. The Jets got the ball, marched down the field with 27 seconds left to go. Brandon Marshall caught a nine yard touchdown pass from Fitzmagic, the magic man, Ryan Fitzpatrick, to tie the score at 20 to 20. So with 27 seconds left to go, Giants gave up another another lead. Gutless, pathetic defense. It's at a tie, score was tied 20 20, went into overtime, and Randy Bullock's 31 yard field goal with eight minutes and 45 seconds left to go in overtime gave the Jets the 23 to 20 lead. I mean, unbelievable. All right, so now the Giants are five and seven. Giants will win the following week. They went to Miami, played the Dolphins, and they won 31 to 24. So now the Giants are six and seven. All right, so they still have a chance. They got three games left to go. And if they would win their three games, they would wind up being nine and seven. Or if worse comes to worse, say they were two and one, they would finish eight and eight. Right? Now let me see here. What the uh all right, now they're ten and six. And nah, well, they've been a pretty tough. The, the two wild card teams had records of ten and six. So the Giants would have had to um actually the Giants are pretty much out of the playoffs. Because the two wild card teams are ten and six, so. But after the Giants beat the Dolphins, they were six and seven. The Giant. This was the this was the Josh Norman game. This they, well this 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 year here. This the, the Carolina was really really good. That's when, uh, Cam Newton, Cam, as uh, Prime Time used to say. Um, that's when he, he was he was he was Superman this year. He was he was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you couldn't he was running all over people. You couldn't stop him. This was the Josh Norman OBJ game. Remember, they kept get they had like 312 penalties against each other, just fighting and all that stuff. And oh my goodness, what a game this was! But of course, the Giants lost, and of course, it was due to their defense. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, it was just like a, a continuous nightmare with the, with this freaking defense. <laughs> So, I mean, as I said, once again, Carolina was a very, very good team this year. They lost one game. Actually, this time they came in, they were 13-0, and and the Giants were trying to knock them off, and the Giants should have knocked them off if they had any kind of a defense. So the Giants should have knocked them off, but they didn't. So after the Panthers won this game, they were 14-0. and They wound up losing one of their, game, one of their final two games. They were 15-1. and But, um, but you know, it, it, the thing about this game was the Giants were down 35 to 7 with five minutes and 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter. So the Panthers just kept scoring points. The defense couldn't stop nobody, couldn't stop nothing. 35, 35 to 7. Well, somehow the Giants scored four touchdowns. And uh with them and with a minute 46 left to go, Odell Beckham Jr on a pass from uh, Eli Manning, a 14-yard touchdown pass. I think it was on fourth down, beat Josh Norman in the left corner of the end zone, right? I think I think he caught the ball. Uh, Josh Norman was on the ground. I think o- OBJ stepped over him like an like, like Alvin Iverson, I think it was. Um, you know, and we tied the score at 35-35. The place was going freaking bananas, going crazy. I was going crazy, jumping up and down on my TV, about it, watching the TV upstairs. We were down 35-7. to seven. We scored four straight touchdowns to tie the game at 35 with a minute 46 left to go. So, of course, with that Giants defense, what do you think happened? Uh, Carolina got the ball. They walked. Right down the field, right, and, and with no seconds left to go, time expired. Who else? Graham Gano kicked a forty-three yard field goal, and the Carolina Panthers beat the Giants thirty-eight to thirty-five. So this is what the three hundred and twelfth game this season so far that the Giants blew a lead in the final minute or two. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. The defense couldn't – when it, when you needed the defense to make a stop, they couldn't do it. Absolute trash. Then the final week the, – a uh, second to final week, the Giants were at home. I'm sorry, they were away. They were played in Minnesota. They lost, lost 49 to 17 to the Vikings. Forget about 49. It's absolute garbage. Ah, a defense. 
So now the Giants are six and nine. So then the final game of the season, the Giants played the Philadelphia Eagles at home and they lost 35 to 30. It wasn't so much, was it a last? It wasn't a last minute. No. But what it was, um, let's see here. What happened here? This was the uh the Eagles had an 83 yard touchdown, uh, fumble return for a touchdown. Walter Thurman, 83 yard defensive fumble return for the Eagles. The Giants were winning uh, 27 21. They were driving, right? They got down, I guess, whatever. They got down in, 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 inside the Eagles 20, fumbled the ball. Walter Thurman ran it back 83 yards for a touchdown. So basically, that was like at least a 10 point play right there. So. The Giants were up 27-21, so instead of at least maybe kicking a field goal and being up 30-21, to 21, the Eagles scored seven points. So if the Giants were up 30-21 to 21 with a field goal, the Eagles scored one more time. They scored on a touchdown. So the Giants Giants would have could have possibly won uh, like 30-28, to 28, right? But the Eagles, um, let's see here. See, I said the Giants were up 27-21. The Eagles scored a touchdown on the, on the fumble return to go up 28-27. Then they scored another touchdown to go up 35-27. to And then with four minutes and 30 seconds left to go, Josh Brown kicked the 48-yard field goal to make it 35-30. But the Eagles couldn't – I'm sorry, the Giants couldn't score anymore. And it went up 35-30 to Eagles. But, I mean, you know, the, if a fumble return, 83 yards back for a touchdown. I said that's like at least a 10 point swing. So instead of the Giants getting at least a field goal, the Eagles got 10 points. Now, if you, if you take that, if you take the fumble return, return back for a touchdown away and you give the Giants a field goal, Giants wind up winning the game. But it is what it is. I mean, just an absolutely horrible, horrible. I mean, not so much, I've said offensive wise. What we got here? Shane Vereen, he you know, he wasn't much – you weren't going to get much out of him out of the running game, but he was very good as far as a receiver. He caught 59 passes. Rashad Jennings had 29 receptions. Uh, Dwayne Harris, he had 36. Odell Beckham Jr., he had 96. I mean, he had 1,450 yards. He had 13 touchdowns. Um, Ruben Randall had another good season. He had 57 receptions. He had eight touchdowns. Uh, Will Ty, tight end, he caught 42 catches. Larry Donnell, he had 29 receptions. I mean, he had a lot of people. I mean, what, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Had like 18 different guys catch passes during the season. I mean, a lot, you know, I mean, they, they were slinging it. They could score some points. They could move the ball. Not so much running the ball. They didn't have a great running game. But, I mean, Eli had a, the, the – um, the protection was very good, and you know, so Eli, you know, had some had some weapons. Ruben Randall did good, obviously. Um, uh, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. had a phenomenal season. Unfortunately, you know, Victor Cruz was not there, or the offense could have been even better because Victor Cruz, as I said, he strained his calf. He came back from his injury from what he sustained in 2014 against the Eagles. Tried to come back, and, and in training camp, strained his his calf, one of his calves. And it was, it was funny. he had to have surgery done on it. So he missed the whole 2015 season. So he came back in 2016, and unfortunately that would be his final season he would play in the NFL. He, he played the 2016 season, Victor Cruz, with the Giants. Then the Giants, I guess, didn't resign him after that. I think he tried to make it with the Bears, but he never did. He never played another down. So, But, I mean, I said that if the Giants and Victor Cruz, imagine that their offense could have possibly been even better, but. It's just not meant to be. I mean, just <laughs> that was just it, it. Just you were just in the midst of that. It just oh, one losing season after the other it was just kind of like, when's it going to stop? And the defense was absolutely atrocious. But then that's why, kind of, the following season, Jerry Reese went to girly world and he just started spending money like crazy in free agency. He brought in Snacks Harrison, he brought in Janoris Jenkins, and he brought in Olivier Vernon in, and it actually which is not the way you want to do it, but it actually it worked because the Giants, let's see, in 2015, as I said, they gave up 27.6 points per game. Then they went to Girly World, spent all this money on free agency, brought in those guys, they went from 27.6 points per game down to 17.8 points. They went down 10 points a game. Um, 
on the defense. They went down 10 points a game, down to 17 points a game. Unfortunately for them, their offense went down to 19 points a game in 2016. So, but you know, they won a bunch of close games, a bunch of low scoring games. Um, of course, they got blown out <laughs> the playoffs. That was when Odell Beckham Jr. took everybody on the boat trip, right? And they had, don't worry about the we don't have to worry about worrying about the Packers in the playoffs. We got this, right? We're the Giants. Let's go on a boat trip. What an idiot. <laughs> That's just stupid. But I mean, you know, so so actually it did work. And the Giants in 2016 had a winning record. They went to the playoffs. They actually were 11 and 5, but that's not the way you want to do it. And then, of course, it it it, it uh, backfired on them. And in 2017, all heck broke loose. McAdoo got fired with like four games left to go. And Reese got fired. McAdoo got fired. Everybody, I got fired. You got fired. <laughs> Everybody got fired. In, in 2017, absolute horrible, horrible, horrible season in 2017. But, but as I said, but you know, to to try to correct the problem the Giants had on defense, Jerry Reese went out and spent a ton of money on uh, in free agency, and it worked for one season. But it is what it is. But I mean, at six and ten, I said, but with a better defense, the Giants could have easily gone to the playoffs. I, you know, I mean, as said, they went toe to toe against Carolina. And I said, once again, they had a better defense, any kind of defense. They probably could have won that game. <sighs> Man, oh, it just gives me a headache just thinking about it. So what does Wikipedia have to say about this, the 2015 season? The 2015 season was the 96th season in the history of the National Football League and the 50th in the Super Bowl area, Super Bowl 50. To celebrate the 50th season of the uh, Super Bowl, a gold-plated NFL logo and other various gold-themed promotions were used throughout the season. It began on Thursday, September 10th, with the annual kickoff game featuring the defending Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots, defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers. The season concluded with Super Bowl 50, the league's championship game, on Sunday, February 7th, 2016 at Le Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, with the Denver Broncos defeating the Carolina Panthers. During the 2015 season, the Oakland Raiders, the St. Louis Rams, and the San Diego Chargers announced their intentions to relocate back to Los Angeles in the ensuing offseason. All three teams had previously resided in the city at various points in their history. NFL owners eventually only approved the relocation of the Rams by a vote of 30-2 to two on January 12, 2016. Thus, 2015 ended up being the Rams' last season in St. Louis. Very interesting. All right. So, in the AFC, let's go over to the, the, uh, the, wall, the, um, the playoff picture, shall we? AFC East, Tom Brady once again, and the Ringham Patriots won with a record of 12-4. and four. AFC North, the Bengals won with a record of 12 and 4. The Steelers got a wild card with a record of 10 and 6. In the AFC South, the Houston Texans won with a record of 9 and 7. AFC West, the Broncos won with a record of 12 and 4. Kansas City Chiefs, with a record of 11 and 5, got the other wild card. So in the playoffs, we have. Kansas City Chiefs beat the Houston Texans 30 to nothing. And then at Paul Brown Stadium, the Steelers beat the Bengals 18 to 16. So now in the divisional round, we had the New England Patriots beat the Chiefs 27 to 20. And the Denver Broncos beat the Pittsburgh Steelers at 23 to 16. So that set up the championship game between the Denver Broncos with Peyton Manning. And Tom Brady. So now you always say still have that Tom Brady, uh, Peyton Manning kind of thing kind of going on. And in the championship game, Denver got the best of uh, uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots. They won 20 to 18, sending the Denver Broncos to the Super Bowl. So in the NFC, the Redskins won with a record of nine and seven. And I said the Giants, you know, with all the games the Giants lost in the final second, final minute or whatever, they easily could have had a better record. Of, uh, you know, I mean, if they wind up nine and seven, I think they could have possibly beat on, uh, uh, maybe on a tiebreaker with the Redskins. They had so many chances to win, so many chances to win games. They easily could have, you know, won three other games easily. But their defense was so atrocious. So the Redskins won the NFC East with a record of nine and seven. 
NFC North, the Vikings with a record of 11 and 5 won the division, and the Green Bay Packers with a record of 10 and 6 got a wild card. In the NFC South, the Carolina Panthers were 15 and 1, and they won. Uh, NFC West, the Arizona Cardinals with a record of 13 and 3. They won the NFC West, and the Seattle Seahawks with a record of 10 and 6 got the other wild card. So now in the playoffs, Green Bay beat Washington 35 to 18. And in a real barn, oh, this this one, this was outside. This was frigid, 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 frigid. One more time, frigid conditions. Outside, it was like Minnesota Stadium. I think that might have been with the, the University of Minnesota plays. Um, Seattle beat Minnesota 10 to 9. Of course, Seattle got, got, it, got once again, you know, they, they locked out because I forgot who it was. Guy from Minnesota missed like a, a 20-something yard field goal. He choked. Of course, it was like five degrees outside or zero. You know what I mean, so, but it was a, it was a real short field goal, and he and he I forgot I can't remember if he pulled it or pushed it, but he he choked, and the, and the Seahawks got lucky. The Seahawks shouldn't have won that game, but it is what it is. But Seahawks lost the following week anyway. So in the divisional round, um, Arizona beat Green Bay twenty six to twenty in overtime, and Carolina took care of business against Seattle. They beat knock and knock Seattle out. 31 to 24. So now in a championship game, there wasn't much of a championship game. Carolina won 49 to 15. What a thrashing. So that set up the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 50. Peyton Manning and those Denver Broncos versus the uh, 12 and 4. Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos versus the 15 and 1. Can't kill Newton and the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> oh, boy. This would be, of course, uh, Peyton Manning's final Super Bowl win. And, um, you know, the defense dominated here. Defense, uh, the the the, um, the Broncos defense, you know, really contained um, the, uh, the, 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 the Panthers. Panthers wound up with 315 yards of offense. You know, so, you know, they're, they're used to getting a lot more, but I mean, they're, they're, uh, see how many times did they sack them? They sacked. They sacked them a few times. Times sacked. They they sacked Cam uh, seven times. So they they really did a good job. I mean, they got a lot of pressure on. Unfortunately, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, this this what you guys show you. I mean, I, I, like Peyton Manning, his time was coming to an end. The the Broncos only had 104 passing yards. They had 194 yards for the whole game. So their defense is what won them the, the game. Definitely the defense without question. Um, let's see here. Denver scored a 10 uh, on a 10 play 64 yard drive in the first quarter. They kicked the Brandon McManus kicked the 34 yard field goal to put Denver up three to nothing. And then of course, then the, 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 the Denver Broncos defense recovered a fumble in the end zone by Malik Jackson. And with uh, Brandon McManus kicked the extra point. It was 10 to nothing after the first quarter. So once again, you know, the, the defense. Second quarter, Jonathan Stewart scored a one-yard touchdown run. Graham Gano, right? Kicked the extra point, so it was 10 to 7. Then let's see here. Uh Brandon McManus kicked a 33-yard field goal. See, they they must have they must have um got it. Let's see, how many turnovers yeah, see, Carolina had four turnovers, which wound up being a couple of those were very costly. And the Broncos had two, but um, the, 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 the ones Carolina had were very costly because this one right here, uh, McManus kicked a 33-yard field goal to put at, basically at, you know, at the halftime, uh, the Broncos were winning 13-7. to seven, But the Broncos had the ball. They kicked a 33-yard field goal. They had the ball. Uh, they went four plays minus one yard. So they must have recovered a fumble or picked a pass off or something and had ball deep in Carolina territory because they didn't move the ball at all. And they wound up still kicking a field goal. And then, of course, then the fumble recovered in the end zone. So basically the the the, the, the Broncos defense gave the gave them 10 points, gave gave the Broncos, got the Broncos 10 points in the first half, which wound up being huge. So then in the third quarter. Denver kicked another field goal to go up 16 to seven. 
Carolina, uh, Graham Gano kicked a 39-yard field goal in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes and 21 seconds left. They're going to make it 16 to 10. So now it's still anybody's game. One touchdown from the Panthers, and they win the Super Bowl. But it was not meant to be. Uh, C.J. Anderson scored on a two-yard touchdown run. They had the two-point conversion. Uh, Peyton Manning passed to Benny Fowler and put the, the Broncos up 24 to 10 with three minutes and eight seconds left to go. But once again, the, 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 you know how, how this score was. The, uh, the, I think this was a fumble recovery. This might, I, I'm not sure. I think this might have been when Cam Newton fumbled the ball, and he, he didn't want to jump in the pile. He fumbled the ball, and, and it was a skirmish, and he could have jumped in the pile to try to get it, but he, he, he pretended he, he, he kind of backed up away from the pile. He, he didn't want to go for the ball to try to recover it. But see, with this one here, the, the um, Broncos scored on a two-yard touchdown run. Well, they had um, – they went four the, – the whole drive went four yards. They had to play – they had three plays. The play, their drive was three plays for four yards. And it was on a two-yard touchdown run. So their whole drive, they only had to go four yards. So once again, the defense set them up again. So basically, the, the defense gave the Broncos what would be 17 points in this game. 17 points. Because the offense, the Broncos offense did uh, pretty much absolutely nothing in this game. As I said, they had 194 yards of total offense. It was, they were, the Broncos were one out of 14 on third down conversions, one out of 14, absolutely atrocious. It was, this was like, it was kind of time for Peyton to hang it up. He was, he was at the end of his career. He was at the end of his career. But I mean, I said it, it, there was, there was 17 points that the Bron the Denver Broncos defense gave the, you know I mean? So if you take the, I mean, you can't do it, but I mean, so if you take those 17 points away, all those turnovers, and everything like that, the Carolina would have won the game maybe 10 to seven. So the turnovers were huge in this game, and it was because of the Denver Bronco defense. Denver, if the Denver Broncos defense was mediocre in this game, Carolina probably would have won. But I mean, yeah, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were special. They were fired up. They were special, and they did a phenomenal job. And you know, congratulations. They 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 did what they had to do to shut down Cam Newton. And uh, they gave uh, the Broncos and Peyton Manning another Super Bowl win. So I gave Peyton his second. So he tied, he, he wound up tying Eli. So they both had two. <laughs> oh, boy. So that pretty much wraps up the um, the uh, 2015 season for uh, just a pain, exciting scoring points, but the one painful loss after the other. End of the game, just gut-wrenching, painful losses. So many chances the Giants had to win games and they lost them in the final minute or the final seconds of the game. Just, oh. And unfortunately, as I said, it was the end of Tom Coughlin's era and they wound up bringing in Ben. Well, Ben McAdoo was the offensive coordinator. You know, I mean, he was calling the plays. So, I mean, so, you know, he didn't bring him in. He was there already, right? So, but uh, he was he was certainly not the answer. I mean, what the answer was is they needed – better drafting and they needed to, when they drafted and they had good players, they needed to retain those players. But unfortunately they weren't doing that with Jerry Reese. So, but his time would come to an end too. So they said that wraps up then 2015 season for the New York Giants. We'll be back again tomorrow night with the 2016 season for the New York Giants, which just happened to be the 92nd season in the history of the New York Giants. I'll see you then.